Just a reminder that today is First Friday, and uh, the ideal is that on this day, on the first Friday of every month, that we have the intention of receiving Holy Communion in order to make reparation to the Sacred Heart of Jesus for all the offenses committed against him. And I think, you know, when we think of the situation in the world today, the offenses being committed today are far more grievous than they have been like 50 or 60 years ago. So, so many evils happening in society. So, to make this extra act of love when we receive communion, to receive with the intention of making reparation because of our great love of our Lord, but also because we want to save mankind. We want to help people. So by making reparation, we help all of mankind. So the ideal, of course, is to do this for nine consecutive months on the first Friday of every month. And if we do so, we stand to gain special graces for our efforts to console our Lord in his tremendous grief over the sins of mankind. And also because it's Friday, a reminder that it is a day of penance. So traditionally, people would not eat meat on Fridays you are permitted to substitute some other form of penance. And that's also to remind us that it is on the Friday that our Lord gave his life for us to truly appreciate that more fully. We also give up something. We make some sort of sacrifice, some act of self-denial to share in that suffering. As St. Paul says, in my sufferings, I, share, I make up for what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ. And that, of course, also enables us to have greater self-control, greater self-mastery. So we should do that every Friday. Um, during the season of Lent, interestingly enough, it's, it's kind of mandatory that Catholics abstain from, from meat on Fridays, but the rest of the year we have that option of subst substituting some other penance, but it is still a day of penance, and so we ought to note that. And I wanted to comment just a little bit about today's first reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. So he has this vision and he sees all these, um, you know, these, these uh, wild beasts, you know, that are kind of vicious and devouring kind of beasts. And then he talks about the various horns. And basically, just, just to be aware, what he's referring to is various kingdoms represented by these beasts, but also represented by the horns. And these kingdoms will be oppressive kingdoms. But then, he, as he goes on, in the end, he says, um, you know, the, the, the one who uh, sits on the throne and, uh, you know, fire and light come out from him. In other words, God appears and it's the kingdom of God and, and, and justice will be meted out for everyone. And then, of course, there's a reference to Christ also, uh, one who uh, came, um, one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the ancient one and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away, and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. So it's kind of a reminder that even though there will be all these other kingdoms that will oppress the people, there is the kingdom of God that is an everlasting kingdom. And so his kingdom will endure, and his kingdom will conquer all these other kingdoms. Now, some scripture commentators point out that this vision of Daniel, in one sense, has been fulfilled prior to the coming of Christ, but it's also pointed out that this vision also applies to the future, to the end times, especially when we consider the, the ancient one coming on his throne, right? In other words, the final judgment. And this is um, sort of reaffirmed or, or also reiterated in the book of Revelation and also by various saints and mystics. So there will be these kingdoms that will rise up, but they will only last for a while. And of course, these kingdoms will, will do much to persecute the followers of our Lord. And so the importance is that we persevere knowing that there is this eternal kingdom that awaits all of us, this eternal kingdom that will eventually conquer every worldly kingdom. In today's gospel reading, our Lord, he gives his disciples a parable about the fig tree and all other trees that when you see the leaves sprouting, 
you know that summer is already near, you know that the leaves will continue to grow and the trees will bear fruit, etc., etc. And then he says, um, so also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Now this can apply to the kingdom that is imminent, right? The, the beginnings of the church that will take place, but it can also refer to the end times. And it's interesting how our Lord, he points out, you know, in the end times, people will continue to marry and, you know, get married and do all these things. In other words, it'll be just like every ordinary day, people won't think anything about it. Nevertheless, there will be various signs. There will be plagues and earthquakes and, and wars and rumors of wars and natural catastrophes and, and then stuff like that. Now, some argue, well, these have taken place in every age. That's true. But it's also true that near the end times, these will be more prominent, maybe more widespread. And so our Lord is saying, if you are able to read the signs of the times, well and good because that will help you to prepare because you should prepare in other words if we knew that our lord's second coming was imminent we would be much more motivated to to perfect ourselves to maybe try to save souls to try to evangelize particular individuals we would do a lot more but if we think oh well our age is just like anybody else's age and oh the second coming is like who knows how far away, it's not going to happen during my lifetime, then we're going to be more slack, we're going to take it easy, we're not going to be as motivated. And it's interesting that when we talk about the end times, the second coming of Christ, it's not just the prophecies that our Lord spoke about. In other words, it's not just about end times. Very often we fail to read manifest signs in our own lives. You know, we're all getting older. How much longer do we think we're going to live? How much time do we have? Time is running out. I recall when I was young, I knew this elderly gentleman. He was 80 years old, a very good Catholic, very devout Catholic, but he just had a wrong attitude. He had cancer, unfortunately, and basically he was dying, but he was still, you know, capable and functioning. And he was just going from one Marian apparition place to the next hoping for a miracle. Now, it's not wrong to hope for a miracle. It's not wrong to go to these apparition sites. And, but you also need to prepare for death. And my impression was that he was not preparing for that. He wasn't preparing for the fact that this cancer could, you know, take away his life, basically. So, yes, he should do everything he can in his power to fight the cancer. Yes, hope that he can conquer it. But he's 80 years old. So in other words, he probably doesn't have a whole lot of time left. And because he's 80 years old and has cancer and it's fairly aggressive, his chances of surviving are very slim. So yes, do everything you can to fight the cancer. But more importantly, prepare for death. And many of the saints, when they went to bed at night, they would you know, fold their, their hands uh, on, their, on their chest or their stomach and imagine themselves laying in their coffin and appearing before the judgment of God. And this is a very good habit to get into, to think about the reality of death, to think about laying in our coffin, to think about our funeral and how will people remember us? So, we don't know when our death is going to be. We don't know when the second coming of Christ is going to come. But our Lord is trying to warn us and he's saying, be prepared because you know not the day nor the hour. Just a reminder, um, this evening after the evening mass, we will have the all night vigil of adoration. So those of you who want to stay, we will leave the front door of the church open until around midnight and then we will reopen it early in the morning. Uh, if you come later, if you have someone's contact here, maybe you could text them, they can open the door for you. Uh, but that's just for security reasons. And also tomorrow, um, Father Sam Samuel will be coming to do uh, a retreat, a day of reflection. 
And so he will be celebrating the morning mass tomorrow, and there will be exposition of the Blessed Sacrament afterwards. His talks will be in the church. There will be a break, and it will finish around 12 noon. So all of you are invited to that. And just um, uh, an announcement for next week, uh, next week, uh, Friday, it's the Feast of the Immaculate Conception of Our Lady, a great solemnity. Um, in the evening, the Legion of Mary will be conducting the Living Rosary at 6 p.m. So that's next Friday, 6 p.m., Living Rosary. And because of that, next Friday in the evening, we will not have exposition of the Blessed Sacrament.